If you could go back and do it all over again, would you study something else at university? It's a big decision to make at 18, and a challenging jobs market only makes the choice more critical. Meanwhile, students are being failed by higher ed from the rising cost of tuition and insufficient investments in technology or innovation in teaching. There is a serious disconnect between course content and the real world. What can be done? Zayed University is taking a proactive approach, welcoming a class of first-year students this week to an exciting new program that does away with lectures and final exams in favor of internships and skills building in subjects like AI, entrepreneurship, and social change. You are listening to Business Extra coming from the National and Abu Dhabi. I'm your host, Kelsey Warner. Just a quick note before we begin, if you like this episode, please do subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. I'm joined today by Rory Reynolds, the National's news editor. Hi, Rory. Hello, and thank you for having me. Rory, on the news desk, you all have been paying close attention to new trends in education and the jobs market, specifically what companies are looking for. Can you frame up for us a bit the challenges and opportunities students and new graduates are facing when they are going out to actually find a job? Of course. So we um, we spend a lot of time talking to recruiters and companies that are hiring because people are very interested in this. And one of the things we most commonly hear is that um, recruiters and companies are struggling to find people that have the right skills for the particular roles that they have. Uh, it's not that they're not educated. It's not that they don't have degrees. Indeed, people here are very well educated. But they are looking for transferable skills and they're looking for people who can kind of turn their hand to anything. Um, What does this mean? I mean, they're looking for public speaking, um, good teamwork. Um, I mean, a lot of companies just need someone who can take a project um, that they don't necessarily need to be an expert in and kind of see it through from start to finish and all of the sort of, um, you know, obstacles that you have to overcome. And I think increasingly employers are looking at, you know, what are, how are people being educated? What are they learning in university? And what are they coming out with? And, um, you know, if we are going to, Um, sort of thrive in the years that come when many traditional jobs might be lost or might be replaced. Uh, We need to think carefully about this now. Um, And you're quite right. A lot of people, you know, our age, as we were talking about just a moment ago, are thinking if I could do this all over again, would I study something differently or would I not study at all? Or would I, uh, you know, and and I I think it's taken the pandemic for us uh, and the rising cost of education to sort of get to the point where we, we look very seriously about what we're learning and why. So Zayed University, as I mentioned at the top, is an interesting example of these changes taking place. They announced earlier this summer plans to overhaul completely how they teach students over the next five years. And one of the first efforts is this Zayed University X Minerva partnership. It's a tie-up with a U.S. education provider. Can you tell me a bit more about the curriculum? I'd be happy to. So we've been talking to Zayed University and Minerva since they first announced this um, a couple a couple of weeks and months ago, earlier in the summer, and it's a really interesting program. So these are they're offering um, a four year bachelor's degree program. So this isn't a short course, and they're offering three majors for people um, who are starting uh, to learn with them. Uh, the three majors are business transformation, which is focused around teaching students how to take an idea from a concept phase to market. That's very much what employees are looking for. Um, There's another strand, another major, which is computational systems program, um, which teaches students, perhaps the sort of students that would be interested in IT and and AI anyway, how to use the techniques of artificial intelligence and software engineering to build innovative tech, data-informed decisions. And again, that's what employees are looking for. Employees are looking for um, people who have you know, at the very least, a grasp of data and figures. Right. This idea that literacy has now been replaced by data literacy, and you need to be able to, you know, produce readable, beautiful products out of the data that you are mining or collecting. And then there's a third. Oh, I was just going to say, there's a lot of people um, who are in their 30s and 40s who don't have those skills. And that is a very good argument for why you might want to do a course like this. Uh, the third one is social innovation, uh, which looks more at uh, the kind of issues facing developing and developed economies and looks at how governments um, sort of can impose and bring about social change. Um, So perhaps a bit more theoretical um, from my understanding. Right. And so Zayed welcomed its first cohort of about 140 students this morning. I was at the convocation and Her Excellency Nora Al-Kabi, who's the university's dean, really, she pledged to future-proof these students' careers. So we're looking forward to see what they come out with 
in the years to come, but they'll be, you know, partnering with businesses in the UAE to work on internships to tackle real world issues. And, you know, this is the first of more courses and classes to come from the university. So to learn more, I spoke with the founder of Minerva, Ben Nelson. Here that is. You founded Minerva Project in 2011 amid a rising tide of new education technology startups. Your model in particular focuses on student outcomes and really applying student work to real-world contexts. Can you talk a bit more about Minerva's mission and this new partnership with Zion University? So Minerva Project exists, um, our formal mission is to nurture critical wisdom for the sake of the world. So we believe that the educational institutions of the world need to recenter away from the road transmission of knowledge and towards the application of wisdom, which is basically a colloquial way of saying systematic thinking that you apply in any context that you encounter, whether you've encountered it before or not. And we did that by creating our own university, Minerva University in the United States. And now we are partnering with other institutions all over the world that are following the example of Minerva University. And so with Syed University, we've uh, joined together to create a College of Interdisciplinary Studies that is effectively taking Zayed and leapfrogging it ahead of all of the other universities in the region to offer the finest education uh, available using the core tenets of the science of learning and the learning design that Minerva has pioneered over the last decade. Okay, so applying wisdom sounds a lot like my somewhat useless liberal arts degree of 10 years ago. (laughs) So can you describe a little bit more about, I mean, you say that you want to get students to actually recall what they learned and apply it in a real world context. So how do you do that? Easy to say, hard to do. Yeah. And in, in, in fact, it's, it's empirically uh, almost impossible to do if you think about the traditional methods. And the reality is, is that you, uh, though you call the degree you have a liberal arts degree, and though the institution that you went to, and I don't know which it is, claims that it is a liberal arts education, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, in fact, almost nobody who gets a quote unquote a degree from a liberal arts institution even knows what the term means. People generally think, oh, liberal arts, that must mean have something to do with the humanities or poetry or art. Um, it turns out that it has nothing to do with the humanities. Uh, a liberal arts, the etymology of the term, comes from this idea that in order to have a free society, a society where you are not born into your station, but where you can actually have control of your life and participate in society in a productive way, you have to be skilled in the various disciplines or arts that allow you to have freedom or liberty, hence the liberal arts. And the concept behind the liberal arts as we're reintroduced into our modern world by Benjamin Franklin Thomas Jefferson in the 18th century is that you have to be able to learn practical knowledge, as Franklin called it, or useful knowledge, as Jefferson called it, which means that you center the education not on subject matter or on majors or on content, which I bet your quote unquote liberal arts education uh, did, but instead you center it on the habits of mind and foundational ideas on which practical knowledge is built. And so when you reorient education away from being centered on an academic discipline and instead on the tools that you can use to solve problems, to break them down into component parts, to think about how they actually interact with with other kinds of systems in the world once you implement them that help you actually communicate and work well with other people. And you do so not at a theoretical level, but at an applied level where you apply it again and again and again until you build intuitions in the mind, you all of a sudden produce a wise person. But what you can't do is produce a wise person by having them take a comparative literature class one day and a psychology class in the next day, and they have a final exam for which they cram for the last week before the exam, and then forget everything they quote unquote learned leading up to that. Students at Zayed University who are taking Minerva's program, what 
what will they be studying and how will they be applying it? So the students on the, in the program, first and foremost, begin with a full year of a general education that introduces them to dozens of these cognitive tools that they're going to, going to apply, not only for the rest of their studies, but for the rest of their lives. So things like understanding that you need to solve root cause of, of a problem as opposed to the symptoms that you may encounter. And even before that, to understand what is the purpose of even trying to solve that problem? What are you trying to achieve? Thinking about the emergent properties, the unintended consequences and second third, and third order effects of those types of solutions. Thinking about how do you actually communicate with other people by understanding the audience that you're communicating to and modifying what it is that you say based on who you're talking to. And so those types of underlying concepts are what is common to all of the students at Syed X Minerva over the coming four years. But then they can choose one of three different interdisciplinary majors. One in business transformation, that is really focused on understanding the role of a corporation in a dynamic market that focuses on growth and competition with all of the various factors that corporations need to deal with. Uh, one in computational systems, which helps students understand holistically things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, software engineering, but not just from the, the point of view of coding, but actually from an interdisciplinary problem-solving approach, or a Bachelor of, social, of Sciences in Social Innovation. Um, and that is helping them use their systematic thinking to think through all of the aspects of solving very difficult societal challenges, right? Where you can apply deep analytical tools and understanding core aspects of these challenges you're dealing with, as well as understanding the concept of how to persuade and build movements with other people to actually solve problems in a holistic way. Thinking about these three programs that will all, you know, at the end of four years, confer a bachelor's degree upon, you know, each student that successfully completes the program. I'm thinking about the World Economic Forum's prediction that 85% of jobs that will exist in 2030 have not been invented yet. It's it's one of those like fun facts I feel like we trot out every now and then. Are those three programs pointing to, you know, anticipating some of the change that we're about to see or that we are in the midst of and this idea of kind of future proofing careers? Right. And you know, I I think that what you your the latter part of your statement was actually the most uh, important. Uh, what we're actually in the midst of all too often organizations, you know, that want to make headlines or universities that want to sound fancy, we'll talk about this unknown future and, and how difficult it is to know what will occur in the future and, and uh, ooh, what will happen? Will, we do, will it be 85% or will it be 15%? Um, and everybody has these lovely debates, and then they ignore the fact that we've been living in the future for the past 30 years. The idea that there are new careers that pop up all the time, that there's enormous human mobility uh, geographically across sector and industry. Uh, the idea that jobs are no longer oriented around lifetime employment, but that the average tenure in a job is counted in the low single digit number of years as opposed to in decades. Uh, the idea that your career evolves over the time of your life has is not a futuristic, oh, maybe at some point automation will make my job more of a threat. We've been living in that world for decades. And this kind of sleight of hand, this attempt of a sleight of hand of saying, well, you know, boy, we, we really have to prepare kids for the future. And then you have conferences and people meeting about them and saying, oh, yes, how will we prepare people for the future? And everybody nods and then, you know, drinks their coffee and goes back to their respective universities and does nothing is a great way of avoiding the fact that for the last 30 years, universities have done an abysmal job at training their graduates for the present. And so 
I don't need to worry about what's going to happen in the future because it's safe to say that all of these trends of globalization, automation, of significant industry disruption are just going to continue and accelerate. But what is true is that we need graduates who are prepared for this world right now. And we have to acknowledge that universities fall woefully short in that order. And that is what the amazing leadership at Zayed University not only recognized, but decided that they had to do something about. So rather than just going to the conferences and nodding your head and convening and talking about maybe and what if, the leadership at Zayed said, no, we are going to transform this institution and we're going to do it based on the only model of higher education that is proven to work. And that takes a remarkable amount of courage and perseverance. And and I'm just stunned at, at what they've been able to do here. So I want to talk a bit about the life of a Zayed Minerva student. You promised no lectures, which is a very good sales pitch. But what can a person in a four-year degree program like this one expect? So the incarnation of this program really marries the best of both worlds and thinks through what aspects of education should be done asynchronously, individually, basically the consumption of information, it's known as the flipped classroom where you consume your information outside of class, what should be done socially in a virtual planned environment where we actually built the digital learning environment that maximizes the ability for students to interact and apply the information that they've learned in dramatic and and effective ways. And then what happens experientially in the beautiful Zayed campuses, either in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi, where students gather and apply what it is that they've learned in their offline and live synchronous classes to real world challenges and programs. And so what happens is throughout the entire four-year process, students will be engaged in flipped classroom, actually radically flipped classroom uh, exercises where they both do their homework and read at home. They come to class having to be prepared because professors aren't allowed to talk for more than four minutes at a time, and they have to engage students at all times in deeply processing what it is that they've learned and push them on how to apply it in new ways. And then they're going to come onto campus where they'll be challenged by dozens of corporate partners that are going to give them real world applications, real world problems that they're facing and allow the students to apply what it is they've learned in their class, beginning in their very first year, to help think through and eventually solve those kinds of real-world challenges. And so that mix of self-paced learning, live synchronous classes that are fine-tuned for the students' intellectual development, and then real-world applications and experiential learning on campus really provides that best-of-all-worlds arc. So this is a regional debut for Minerva here, right? What are you hoping to learn out of of this program? This is the first time that we have worked with a partner that is effectively taking their entire physical plant and enabling it to be reimagined to amplify what happens in a Minerva program. And so the ability to think about how to best utilize space and gathering places and a campus-based environment uh, as opposed to what we've traditionally done, which are urban-based environments or virtual environments or little pieces of campuses. Uh, That is, to me, extraordinarily exciting and something I really look forward to learning a lot about. Ben Nelson, thank you for joining me. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this episode, please do subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. All that's left to do is thank our producers, Arthur Edison and Aisha Khan. And thank you for listening.